He's a distinguished professor of biological oceanography at Hiroshima University. His initial research interest was on zooplankton production ecology, um, and he's had many, many important contributions. Um, you know, oftentimes when you introduce a speaker, you look at his CV. Well, I, I have read most of his papers on, um, on zooplankton, which were, were excellent and, and really helped my own work. Around 1990, he shifted his research to jellyfish because of the blooms of these large jellyfish that have been occurring off Japan. And he'll present today some of his work on this large uh, jellyfish that's really severely impacting the fisheries off Japan. Uh, Dr. Ui is former president of the Plankton Society of Japan, former president of the World Society of Copopedologists, and I'm a member, that's the way I can pronounce it correctly. Um, and he organized the first zooplankton, organized the zooplankton production symposium in Hiroshima recently. So it's a great honor for us to listen to Dr. Ui this morning. Thank you, Mike. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's really a pleasure and an honor uh, to be here, the second International Ocean Research Conference, and give a keynote lecture today. Uh, my talk is on the jellyfish bloom uh, in the East Asian marginal seas. And uh, we'd like to solve this problem, so I'd like to talk about the how to tackle this problem in a, a productive ecosystem. Uh, help and uh, assess uh, the human impact on marine ecosystem based on the climate change, fisheries, pollution, shipping, and other parameters. And then you'll see the global map of impact on marine ecosystems. Uh, red area indicates that the impact is high. So uh, <coughs> uh, the, there's two impacted area. One is the East Asian coastal waters. Another is the Ural waters here in European coastal waters. Uh, you also find this global map uh, showing the jellyfish population trends by large marine ecosystems based on scientific publication and anecdotal data. Uh, the jellyfish publication or the scientific investigation, uh, particularly on the quantitative analysis of the uh, jellyfish for a long time, is still lacking. So he used also the anecdotal data to assess the jellyfish population trend uh, in the large marine ecosystems. You will find the two areas. Of course, uh, East Asian area is the really are covered with the red color. And also the European coastal waters have uh, uh, impacted over the jellyfish increasing area. So he found that the jellyfish increased in 28 LMEs out of 45 LMEs. Uh, in here, the European waters, uh, of course, there are many jellyfish causing the problem, particularly uh, by these two species. One is the uh, invasive tinophore, uh, Mnemiopsis lady. Uh, distribution of this species is now spreading widely uh, along the European coastal waters. And another one is uh, Pelagia nuctiluca, which caused the problematic blooms just in front of us uh, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, what is going on in the East Asian marginal seas? East Asian marginal seas consist of Bohai, Yellow, East China, and Japan seas. Uh, the area is quite small, uh, less than 1% of the total marine area. However, fish uh, catch sustain 11% of the world marine fish catch, indicating that this area is very productive. 
We have high human populations here, about 800 million peoples, which is much larger than the total uh, EU population. Therefore, this area is quite impacted. So uh, this area is environmental hotspot, represented by the uh, global warming, uh, eutrophication, harmful algal bloom, the oxygenation, and the jellyfish bloom. Uh, in the East Asian coastal waters, uh, that we have many uh, jellyfish, including the, this one, uh, Aurelia avita. This species is the most common, commonly distributed species all over the world. In the East Asian marginal seas, this species uh, bloom, particularly in the eutrophic bays and inlet, uh, causing not only the fisheries, but also the power point Sorry, power plant. <laughs> power plant operation uh, in the uh, massive aggressive uh, mass aggregation of this species occasionally clog the intake of the cooling water, so the station have to stop the operation. Uh, the, another one is, of course, this one, uh, the giant jellyfish, Nemopilema nomurai. Uh, mainly, uh, I will talk on this species because uh, this species is uh, endemic to the East Asia, and that this uh, the impact of this species is much larger, uh, well, in economically and ecologically compared to the uh, blooms of the Aurelia avita. Uh, the bloom of the giant jellyfish is very rare in the last century. It occurred in uh, 1920, uh, then 1958, uh, and then the 1995. So nearly once per uh, the 40 years. It's very rare. However, from the turn of the century, it becomes more frequent. Uh, 2002, just seven years after the previous bloom. And then we have the bloom three, four, five, six, seven, and nine, uh, making almost annual, except for the uh, 2008. However, this species uh, rather calm and quiet in the last five years. Uh, where this species come from? Uh, the large uh, base system flanked by Korean Peninsula and the mainland of China, uh, including Bohai, Yellow, and Northern uh, East China Sea, is their cradle. This is the uh, seeding and the nursery ground of Nemopilema nomurai. Uh, in March and April, Ephyra, the baby Medusi, uh, are released from benthic pot. And then they grow uh, slightly larger, and uh, uh, we have the large river, uh, Changjiang River. Uh, we have the monsoon in early summer. So uh, a huge amount of river water just push into the uh, East China Sea and then make form the Changjiang River low salinity water mass. Young Medusi are entrained in this uh, offshore spreading water mass. And then the, we have uh, Tsushima current from, from the south, push them up to the north, to the uh, Tsushima Strait between Japan and Korea in July. And then the jellyfish are transported further northward uh, in the Japan Sea. And then they reach to uh, Hokkaido uh, in September. And then the part of the population, well, not part, but majority of the population 
uh, transported to the Pacific side. And then the go down uh, to the south, uh, their destination is uh, the Boso Peninsula near Tokyo. Uh, the, they are expatriated migration. So the Medici uh, around Japan, Japanese waters have no chance to go back to their homeland. I show you the general picture of the uh, life cycle of this species. Uh, the life cycle is really the, uh, shows the seasonality. Uh, well, the Medusa stage, of course, has two sex, male and female. They produce eggs, and egg uh, hatched into planula larvae. And then planula swim in the water column to attach to some hard substrate to, meta to metamorphose into a polyp. Uh, polyp uh, increase asexually. Uh, this is the animation how to produce or how to reproduce uh, themselves. Uh, the polyp, very soft of course, extend their stolon forward, and then their body mass moves to the forwards and leave the footstep behind. That footstep, uh, like uh, cell mass, is called podocyst. From this podocyst, new polyp exists, just pop up, to make uh, the, uh, the, their colonies, to form their colonies. Uh, and, uh, in the spring, uh, they do uh, stolobulation, and then they release the ephyra, and then the ephyra develop to uh, a medusa stage. Uh, their growth rate uh, during the medusa and the uh, metephyra, sorry, uh, growth rate uh, in ephyra, metephyra, and young medusa stage is really high, 10 to 20% per day. And then the young medici, uh, which are available in the uh, Japanese waters, uh, their body weight is uh, several kilograms, about three kilograms, for example, uh, in July 2005. And then their body weight increased exponentially to uh, over 100 kilograms in November, showing that their uh, their growth rate is just uh, 3% per day. Such high uh, growth rate they show. Oh, excuse me. To attain such a high growth rate, they have to eat a lot of food, of course. What is their food? First, uh, I will show you uh, what is the feeding appendages or organs for, the, for this species. They have two apparatus. One is scapulates, just underneath the bell. And also uh, we have uh, oral arms, uh, which are divided into many parts. And uh, one branch uh, of the uh, uh, oral arms has many mouthlets, uh, the small mouth. Uh, the diameter is just uh, one meter, okay? So only the food, smaller than one millimeter, uh, the the mouthlet diameter is just one millimeter. So the food smaller than this size can become, go into the inside of the body. So the major uh, uh, food for them is just copepos and also the some uh, gastropod larvae. Uh, we estimated the carbon budget uh, of Nemopilema. Uh, assuming the 50 kilogram wet weight, uh, well, 99% of the wet weight is the seawater, okay? Nearly 99% of the jellyfish is seawater. So it's really water back like animals. And uh, uh, the organic content is about 1%. Uh, carbon content is 0.56% of the wet weight, so we can estimate the carbon weight too. Uh, specific growth rate is 3% per day, 
And we uh, determine the uh, respiration rate of this jellyfish. And then we can uh, calculate how much carbon they need for the respiration and for the growth, and then how much they have to eat uh, per day. Okay? So uh, if the ambient uh, zooplankton uh, density of our the biomass is five milligram carbon per cubic meter, they have to clear the more than 5,000 uh, cubic meters of water per day. That is the over the Olympic Games swimming pool. So the, just the swimming pool in the Olympic Games, just put one uh, medusa with a weight of 50 kilograms, can just sweep all the water out to gain the food uh, suspended in that water. Uh, this is just one animal's activity. They are uh, aggregated, of course. So in that aggregated area, uh, the area, ambient water, is just free of the zooplankton, so making a desert condition for the fish to migrate to feed. Uh, the uh, asex no, sorry, sexual maturation is also shows, uh, uh, it shows very interesting, interesting things. Even in the spawning season, but in fall, actually, uh, intact and actively swimming medusae have only the immatured uh, organs, just like this. And then the, these intact medusae are caught and then are kept in the net, for example, like, uh, like this, uh, cause uh, some mechanical damage and then the uh, gonad maturation goes rapidly. So uh, they get matured uh, in three to five days. Uh, this means their life uh, get in risk. Uh, some biological switch change from the zomatic growth to the uh, the 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 to the uh, maturation uh, of the gonad uh, to, to produce the next generation. Uh, ovary itself is really uh, tape-like and uh, folded uh, in many layers. So uh, my student just cut it and then extended on the table uh, the one medusi, uh, the 55 kilogram, uh, has total of 200 meters of the tape-like ovary. The fecundity is the 350 million eggs. And another one slightly uh, smaller uh, than size have more fecundity, uh, 690 million. So, uh, of course, bigger size of Medusa have more than 1 billion eggs, huge amount of eggs they have, what well, they can produce potentially. Uh, what's the timing for their fertilization or the spawning? The light is always necessary. Uh, so under the natural condition, of course the light is the sunrise. So after the sunrise, uh, first male responds. Uh, five to 20 minutes after the sunrise, uh, the male started the spermiation. And then female responds later, uh, an hour and a half later. Uh, interestingly, uh, the sperm uh, release immediately after the spermiation is not so active, but, but become active, more active one hour later. So the sperm get active, and then at the same time, uh, the, uh, the female just release the eggs, and they get, they get fertilized. Uh, they do come up to the surface to get the light. Uh, this divers trying to put the necklace on the giant jellyfish, 
this necklace is the pop-up archival transmitting tag, uh, which recorded uh, their swimming lengths. Uh, they are staying in the deep, well, uh, 70, or 70 meters, and then the, in the morning uh, to go up to the surface and then remain staying near the surface and they go down after sunset. So such a interesting biological or the uh, ecological characteristic this species has. And uh, which timing uh, do they form the bloom? Uh, you will find here the annual fish catch statistics from Jap Japanese uh, fish agency, uh, Japan Sea and East China Sea. Uh, the fish catch uh, was high until 1990s and then declined rapidly. So uh, this ecosystem is probably the lots of fish, fish dominated. However, something happens, probably the high impact by human beings. And then now uh, jellyfish dominating ecosystem. So the, uh, well, the jellyfish blooming year, you will find the dark color it's just a fish catch decreasing phase and a decreased phase. Uh, the, however, the story is not so simple. Some years uh, we have big bloom, but in other years uh, almost no bloom. You will find that 2009, it's a big bloom. It's really the big bloom year. However, next year, 2010, uh, no bloom. Only the few number of Medusa are caught uh, in the set net. Uh, in 2009, well, almost every day, the fishermen have to fight more than 1,000 Medusa per set net per day. They have to remove them out. Well, it's very difficult to identify the causes for that kind of ear-to-ear -ear difference. Uh, however, not only the environmental causes, but also they have their own uh, factors in themselves, or biological factor, I should say. That is, the, that may exist in their uh, podocyst. Podocyst is, uh, of course, the cyst. They produce a new polyp, of course. But uh, the podocyst itself is covered. Uh, well, inside the podocyst, of course, there's the, the, the cell mass uh, with lots of uh, nutritional reserves inside. So, uh, in other words, this tiny podocyst, less than 200 micron, is just a seed for the two meter large jellyfish, right? And then this cell mass is covered with uh, kitchen, uh, well, the, the, the crust, uh, the cover. So they can, uh, uh, they are capable of dormancy for up to eight years. However, this uh, dormant shift uh, can get awake by uh, exposure to the extreme environmental conditions such as high temperature, uh, low salinities, hypoxia, bearing uh, into uh, organic rich sediment. So you will find the newly uh, existed polyp. Of course, these polyps are active to reproduce uh, sexually themselves to make more larger population of polyps. So the hypothetical scheme to cause uh, the Nemopilema nomulai bloom, uh, on the non-blooming year, 
Of course, the, uh, the jellyfish medusae produce the eggs and the uh, planula settles into the, uh, the benthic substrate to metamorphose into